episode of the Verde Valley Experience. I am your host, Jennifer Cohen. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a fun lineup for today's show, so we're really glad you're here. The Sedona International Film Festival is coming. This is so exciting. It's always exciting when this happens. Patrick Schweiss is here today to give us the 411 on everything that is going on, the films, the concerts, the events, the workshops, all which will be held during this year's Sedona International Film Festival. You're going to want to get a pencil, write all this down. <laughs> Just kidding. Great website. We'll talk about that. Coming up on January 24th, the Red Rock State Park is hosting Arizona Humanities presentation done by Executive Director Ken Zoll on the use, get this, of meteorites among Native American cultures. Who'd have thunk? <laughs> that was new to me. Much like meteorite hunters of today, ancient Native American cultures actively engaged in meteorite collecting. Did you know this? For various reasons, which we will find all about. And Ken will be in the studio to give us all the details on this extremely informative and interesting talk. Then we'll have a conversation with Damien and Ann Browning, who are the founders of Steps to Recovery Homes. Steps to Recovery Homes is an organization that uh, provides recovery services and daily life coaching for people who are serious about overcoming their addiction issues. Their mission is to provide a safe environment free from any illicit drugs or alcohol uh, for people with substance abuse issues. Damien and Ann will be here to share with us their story on how they started this amazing organization. Now, in our last episode, we started our conversation on sound healing and talked about how music has the ability to align biorhythms, clear and balance chakras, release stagnant energies, reset the body system, unlock the body self-healing power, deepen your connection with divine love and peace, all that good stuff. So, in part two of our science and sound healing segment, we will join retired physicist Gary Ellenberger in Sedona and get his take on the subject and gain a little more insight into the didgeridoo. And we'll finish out our show today with a live presentation performance from Three Trees. Three Trees is a healer, a teacher, and a musician, as well as an artist. He holds a passion for the deepening of our connection to the sacred through music and understanding of the mysteries of sound and rhythm as healing modalities for all levels of being. He spent 15 years being a sound practitioner and a healer and a teacher, and he crafts drums and didgeridoos and flutes, and this gives him a unique and profound understanding of the relationship between sound, rhythm, intention, and sacred connection. Three Trees has become international nationally recognized for his workshop, Soul Malnick Healing, as well as performances at many conferences, retreats, and events. And we are so honored to have him in the studio today. And we're so excited. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Our first guest today is Patrick Schweiss. Thank you. You are the executive director of the Sedona International Film Festival, are you not? I am. That's I am. wonderful. <laughs> That's a a job, job I love. And I've that, for 12 years now. It'll be my 12th festival that wow. I'm doing. That's so wonderful. It's very exciting. And you've never lost even a smidgen of your enthusiasm. Not a bit. Mm -mm. Not a bit. A few more gray hair, but no less enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it's so handsome and distinguished. Why, thank you. Distinguished. All, That's what I like to say yes, it's platinum. It's all good. Oh, very nice. I go nice. platinum. Very nice. Well, now, this film festival this year, what's going on? What's happening? Oh, wow. It's our 22nd annual festival, and it's the biggest festival we've ever had. We're wow. opening uh, one night early with a Chicago concert. The renowned band, Grammy-winning Chicago, the real right. band, is coming to Sedona Performing, Sedona Performing Arts Center, and it's going to be a big blown-out concert. And then the next night, we're premiering their feature documentary. It's a oh. brand new documentary. We're the first place to show it. It's called wow. Now More Than Ever, The History of Chicago. Wow. And all the band members are going to stick around after the, after the film and do a Q&A with people. So it's going to be awesome fun. We can get your picture taken with Chicago band members. Wow. Um, it's really quite wonderful. They actually have a sound studio that they built in Sedona. So the movie was oh. sound mixed in Sedona. Their next album that's coming out uh, was sound mixed in Sedona. So we've got a great Sedona connection. So they really felt like they wanted to wow. come and perform here and launch the film here. So we're very excited about that. I bet that that's yeah. Incredibly amazing. Now, tickets for that, I bet, will be gone in a flash. Oh, yeah. We, we go on sale Wednesday, January 20th at 10 o'clock in the morning, and it's mm -hmm. going to sell out quickly. We're thinking mm -hmm. it's going to be gone within an hour. Right. There's only 750 seats. And right. so um, everyone's got to, even I have to buy my tickets. <laughs> so it's a separate ticketed event from the film festival. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone can just go online or come to our office um, and check out the tickets there. Right. So it's yes. pretty exciting. SedonaFilmFestival.com, by the way. Absolutely. Great, great yes. website. So that, that's an amazing kickoff. How do you follow up on that? Well, that's <laughs> exactly what we thought. Uh, we're, we're actually following it up with a really wonderful concert again on Sunday night by Barbara Streisand's sister, Rosalind uh, Kind. And she out. is so talented. She's got the voice of an angel and she loves Sedona. She has a Sedona connection that um, we're hoping that she'll move here someday. And oh. she's going to do her one woman show and concert on Sunday night. And then Mike Farrell from MASH fame mm. is going to come on Monday night the, uh, on the 22nd of uh, February and do his one man show, Dr. Keeling's Curve, oh, wow. about Dr. Keeling, who in the 1950s predicted 
predicted what was going to be happening globally with the carbon levels mm -hmm. and everything, and no one took him seriously. Oh. And now, everything that he had predicted has come true. Wow. And Mike is very passionate about the environment and sustainability and doing good things for our planet. So he's going to come and do his one-man show, and his wife, Shelly Fabre, is going to introduce him. Oh, nice. And so she's going to be there to host it. So that's very fun. Wow. And then the next night, we have Don Knotts' daughter coming, Karen, and she's doing her one-woman show, a tribute to her father, tied up in knots. Wow. So that's going to be on Tuesday. And then Wednesday of Festival Week, and we're really excited about this, Gene Kelly's widow, hmm. Patricia Ward Kelly, is doing her one-woman show, Gene Kelly, The Legacy, a tribute to her late husband. Wow. And uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful show. Lots of mm. clips, lots of stories about behind the scenes and people he worked with. And it's just a beautiful show. So we're very excited about that. And all that is going to segue and lead up to, um, toward the end of the festival, we're doing an American Graffiti reunion. <laughs> and so we're going to show the classic American Graffiti. And a lot of the cast is going to be here. Cindy Williams, Candy Clark, Richard Dreyfus, Mackenzie Phillips, Bo Hopkins is going to be here. It's a whole star. There's about seven or eight celebrities from the film. They're going to be coming, um, and we're going to screen it on the big screen the way it's meant to be seen and have a Q&A with all of these celebrities who really got their start in that film. Wow. So it's very exciting. That is, that's yeah. like beyond exciting. Yeah. And you only have a year to get all this done. I know. <laughs> that's I know. Amazing. It's, it's amazing how what quickly things are. What you've done since together. the last festival. You know, it's, it's crazy, but it's wonderful. Wow. It's really wonderful. And we've got such an outpouring of support. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Sedona's a wonderful place to come. So we have Absolutely. got a nice draw for the celebrities. And uh, we have a very astute, incredible audience that just loves mm -hmm. independent film and yeah. loves entertainment. And uh, so it's a really nice, it's a nice mix. And um, besides that, we've got 160 of the best independent films from around the world. Mm -hmm. So that's even more exciting, including two films that are nominated for Academy Awards mm. uh, in the foreign language uh, category, mm -hmm. Thebe and Mustang. So we're very mm. excited about that. One of our short films, Stutterer, was just nominated for an Academy Award, and right. uh, a lot of other ones were shortlisted. So we got a great, great festival lineup, and wow. uh, probably about 120 filmmakers that are coming, and a few celebrity guests. Wow. It's really exciting. Just a few celebrities. Yeah. Yeah. You've listed how many names of celebrities? Know. Just it's a, a who's few. who. <laughs> it's a who's who. You'll be able to walk yeah. down the streets of Sedona and run into a celebrity or a filmmaker. Oh, my and gosh. We, we turn Sedona into Hollywood for a week, and That's it's very, very fun. Sedona Wood. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Tinseltown meets the Red Rocks. Oh, too much fun. Do you, yeah. you have a chance to get any sleep right now? Do you? Not really. No, now we're working <laughs> on the program not. and the scheduling, yeah. so sleep is not something that really is in my vocabulary right yeah. now. It will be in March when this is all in over. In March, we will sleep for like a month. It's the nature straight. of the beast, and we love yeah. doing it, and we've got a really incredible yeah. staff and team that puts us all you together. You do, you do, yeah. and an amazing location. Absolutely. Yeah. The, yeah. the studio, the theater that you guys use is unbelievable. Yeah. It's just perfect. Yeah, so our Mary D. Fisher Theater is going to turn four years old this spring, mm -hmm. and it's the greatest thing that we could have ever done, and we're so blessed that Mary got behind it and yeah. put her name on it and said, let's do this. Let's build a theater for the community. So it's really become a community center mm -hmm. in Sedona for all sorts of things. To see ballets on screen, national theaters on screen, live simulcast events. We just last fall were approved as the official Northern Arizona venue for the New York Film Critics Series. Wow! So once a month we get to premiere a film uh, before three or four or five weeks before it's in theaters what? and then they do a Q&A live via remote from New York with the celebrities from the film and the directors from the film so we're getting to see these things wow. in Sedona before the rest of the world is so we're very very fortunate yeah. it's, it's because of how we've grown and the support that we've had from the community and from the businesses and right. our audiences so and the amazing great. work that you're doing I don't know how you keep it yeah. all together it's pretty fun it's like putting a puzzle together <laughs> I bet so yeah. tell me a couple of the films you're looking forward to seeing during this festival well I have to say one of them is a film called Hybrids mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very fun. It's a family film, actually. and but So adults will enjoy it. Young kids will enjoy it. Um, it's what happens if Frankenstein and some of the monsters, some of their offspring, created offspring. Mm -hmm. And what do those become? Vampire, Frankenstein, those kind of things. It's a mm -hmm. really, really fun film. We're one of the first festivals to show it, so we're really excited about that. Mm -hmm. There's also another film called Silver Skies, which is a, a primarily a senior citizen cast mm -hmm. of a lot of great senior actors. And given our demographic in Sedona, it's a retirement community. The mm -hmm. film's going to play so well here, and it's just so well done. And it's, you know, what we tried to really focus on this year was finding some comedies. Mm -hmm. You know, so many times independent films are kind of like slit your wrist theater. You mm -hmm. know, it's all very heavy. It's very right. powerful and very sure. good films, but they're dealing with a lot of heavy mm -hmm. issues. So we really made an effort this year to go try to find some more lighthearted mm -hmm. um, films. And so it's really wonderful. There's a documentary called The Keepers about this wonderful zoo, oh, this wow. family that takes care of these zoo 
animals and this precocious giraffe and um, so animal lovers will love that oh, um, so a lot of great environmental films when giants fall all sorts of things mm. so it's really a, it's a very uplifting festival this year and I think wonderful. people are really going to be moved by a lot of the films wonderful yeah. and if you go to the website sedonafilmfestival.com very easy to navigate absolutely you can and your schedule is amazing be, be wary though <laughs> one of them is 100 pages long <laughs> yes, exactly. So at the end of, ja end of January, the last week of January, we'll have the official new schedule posted. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, and if you just wait a couple days after that, the, the interactive grid will be on the schedule and it'll be a little easier than printing out that 100-page document sure. that's on there. Right, though, thank yeah. you for the 100 pages of information. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we, how much better informed could we be? So exactly. that's really amazing. So some key things to remember. The film festival's coming. Yay! Okay, Chicago, oh my God, is going to be playing on February 19th. The tickets will sell out. Instantly. Absolutely. And they go on sale. Wednesday, January 20th at 10 o'clock in the morning. There you go. Okay. Write that down. <laughs> and check out SedonaFilmFestival.com. That's going to be everything you need as far as the schedule, the film synopsis, the, the program. Beautiful. I love that. When you go and it's the online program and it flips through. It's, it's beautiful. It's just yeah, beautiful. It it's just so, and it's so environmentally friendly. It is. You got to exactly. love that. <laughs> I know. We, we agree. We practice what we preach. You do. So and you really do nice. a great job. Patrick, thank, thank you, you so much for everything that you do for the film festival. Congratulations on continuing to be ever more successful and, and gathering more wonderful awards and accolades for just the amazing stuff that you guys do. So thank like, you. I wish and you thanks a for having me, Jennifer. Year. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. Patrick yeah. Swice, Executive Director of the Sedona International Film Festival. Don't go away because we'll be right back. We go, he makes people laugh, makes people smile, and I feel like I have that quality. He's the one who always takes me fishing. I watch golf with him. And <laughs> I watch him cook, because when I grow up, I want to be a cook, too. We have the same faces like this. Dad is the one, when you fall, that picks you up. That unconditional sense of presence and um, reassurance is really what makes him my father. Welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. Our next guest is Ken Zoll, who is the executive director of the Verde Valley Archaeology Center. Ken, thank you for being here today. My pleasure. That's a, it's a wonderful center you guys have there. Well, thank you. It's, you're continually doing just such a, a bang-up job. It's just mm -hmm. awesome. Thanks. <laughs> now, what you have coming up sounds really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. uh, you are going to be doing a talk at Red Rock State Park on January 24th. And the subject... Of the, of the talk is so interesting. Tell us about that. Well, the subject is the use of meteorites among prehistoric Native American cultures. Mm -hmm. My specialty within archaeology is prehistoric astronomy. Mm -hmm. And so obviously part of that is anything dealing with the sky. And what started this particular aspect was we came across a report that said that there was a meteorite found in Camp Verde in a ruin. Mm -hmm. And it actually is only about uh, four miles uh, from the archaeology center, just off of Highway 260. And they found this meteorite there that actually came from uh, Meteor Crater. It was part of the Candy Diablo meteor that created Meteor Crater 50,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so this 135-pound meteorite was carried from there uh, all the way down to the Verde Valley wow. and put in a very special way, a very sacrificial or sac sacred way. And uh, as we started digging around, come to find that there was also a Canyon Diablo meteorite found in the Fossil Springs ruins. Hmm. 
And another one found in the Bloody Basin uh, ruin, just south as you go down 117, you come by that Bloody Basin exit. Uh, so there's three Sanawa ruins that uh, are all dated at the same time period, all had meteors in it in a very sacred way uh, hmm. that came from Meteor Crater. And so this, you're talking 100, uh, Bloody Basin is 127 miles south of it. And so it right. was carried all the way down there. So this has become kind of a thing. I'm working with uh, Arizona State University mm -hmm. and we're actually putting together a, a larger report or study on uh, broader use of meteorites among all Native American cultures within the Southwest, New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona. And uh, to my amazement, there's a lot of them. Wow. And so, but nobody's put it all together. So we're kind of working on that. So this talk that I give is actually through Arizona Humanities mm -hmm. and um, and so it's one of those that I get asked to come to different clubs and places and, and towns to go and speak on. So Red Rock asked me to speak about it and uh, happy to do it. Wow, that's wonderful. And just such an interesting subject. It's mm -hmm. not something that you, th you think about when you think about the, the ancient cultures. You think about meteorites and, mm -hmm. and them using them for, they must have just thought they were... I mean, gifts from God, of course. Well, right. There's a variety of, of different ways that they were referred, um, always, uh, though, in a sacred way, because it came from the heavens, mm -hmm. and who's up there but the, the gods. Right. And um, and so it was some sort of gift or whatever. Mm -hmm. However, you have a wide range. There was one uh, Plains Indian uh, tribe that uh, referred to the meteorites as the feces of the gods. <laughs> And so you, you, when you look okay. at it, you know, it's a big brown thing that comes yeah. out of the sky, you know. Right. And so, uh, but most of the cases, it's, it's something, you know, of a sacred nature. You'd find them on altars and places like that. Sure. So, uh, but everywhere from Greenland to Alaska to Mexico, all over uh, North America. Wow. That is really something. Mm -hmm. And do you do more than one talk a year? Do you do lots of these types oh, of I talks? Oh, I do. Uh, yeah, quite a bit. Actually, the day before um, the talk at Red Rock, I'm in Chandler at the Chandler Library giving right. a talk. And then in February, I'm giving a talk at the Casa Grande Ruins uh, Natural Monument. And then I go to Tucson and give a talk uh, actually at the Oro Valley Astronomy Club. Wow. And yeah. so, yeah, I'm, I'm bouncing around all over giving these I talks. I know. That's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> And if you check out Verde Valley Archaeology Center dot org, you will see Ken's schedule. Yes, <laughs> it's on yes. there. The list of everywhere Ken's got to be. You lots That's of right. gas mileage for you. Well, a lot of gas mileage, you know, but it gets the the, the center out there among mm -hmm. the public, you know. And we, we often will pick up a member or, uh, you know, a donation to the center. So. Um, so it's it's worthwhile going around. That's what that's that's what I get paid this these big bucks of zero dollars sure. being the executive director. That's uh, but right. that's that's what you have to do. You have to get out there. Yeah, so. and I can tell that you would like to do that. Too. Oh yeah, I, I enjoy it. Uh, I like public speaking, and I'm comfortable with it. So yeah, yeah, I can so. tell. Now tell us, is there anything new at the Verde Valley Archaeology Center these days? Well, the uh, we opened up last October the Paul Dyke collection from Rimrock was over twenty four thousand items, and that uh, collection is ongoing. Uh, a couple of things coming up is in March we're going to do, based on the antique road show, we're going to do an archaeology road show. Wow. And we're going to have three PhD archaeologists there and for the one day people from the Verde Valley can bring in Verde Valley collections. So we know there's a lot of families out there that have been in the area for 50, 100 years and they have uh, found things over the years and we're not going to give dollar values, we're just going to tell you what they are and we'd like to know because there are little pieces of information about the history of the Verde Valley that are missing. And mm -hmm. some of those pieces might be filled in if we could see some of the artifacts that had been collected by families over the years. Mm -hmm. We're not looking for the items. You know, they can take mm -hmm. them back home and everything's fine. But uh, we just want the knowledge and to share with them, you know, do they know everything about the items that they have in their collections, their private collections. And then we have our archaeology fair, which mm -hmm. is the... Uh, third week of March in conjunction with the Camp Verde Pecan and Wine Festival. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, over 30 Native American artists that we've personally selected to come out. And we have a series of lectures, films uh, that we'll be showing for those those two days. Wow, that's wonderful. So. And I, I like your, your vision that you have for the center, the stopping removal of artifacts. I mean, this mm -hmm. goes back to the missing pieces of the puzzle which will be helped out by your uh, Artifacts Roadshow mm -hmm. <laughs> that you guys are going to be doing. Exactly. And mm -hmm. because we all know you're not supposed to take anything from the forest, of course you don't take anything from the parks. Um, I know those are the rules. They don't always get followed. 
Right. You know, so that it, in modern days, it's it's much more of a crime. But uh, people have been they've had sometimes it's referred to as pot hunting picnics, you know, mm. back at 1900, 1910, 1920. And that was just the thing that was done. And mm -hmm. the Forest Service knows that. And they're not running around looking to arrest people. They if we, people would bring stuff in and show what they have, it's just helping to fill in the pieces, the knowledge. Right. And uh, so it's 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 not. You know, some families are all paranoid that, oh, the Forest Service will be in the back room and come out with handcuffs. Oh, it's gosh. It's nothing like that. It's just, and they, they know all everything what we're doing, and they're more very, very, very supportive of, mm -hmm. of what we're trying to do. Yeah. And as far as, you know, the, our mission with the property, we did get the property. Mm -hmm. we, we closed Wonderful. in July of 15 acres that was donated to us, over a million dollars of land. And uh, we're in the process of investigating it to uh, uh, figure out where we're going to build our buildings. And we actually have Eastern Illinois University coming out in May, uh, a graduate class in um, geospatial analysis. So they're going to bring out wow. uh, a grain ground penetrating radar. They're going to do uh, a variety of tests over five days. They even have one test that as they go across the surface, uh, it will actually find carbon uh, underground where there was like fire pits. Wow. And so they can tell that without disturbing the soil whatsoever. So wow. they'll be bringing these graduate students out for five days uh, in May. And uh, after that, we'll know exactly where the pit houses are and exactly where we can build our buildings. Wow. So a lot of activity coming on. I so, bet. That's very exciting for you guys. It's very, very, very much exciting. Yeah. 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 Never yeah. a dull moment at the Verde Valley Archaeology Center for sure. <laughs> So if you want to join in on uh, Ken's talk about the uh, use of meteorites in ancient cultures, that's still just is kind of weird to say. It's just so interesting. I want to go. It's January 24th uh, from 2 o'clock till 3.30 at Red Rock State Park, which is just outside Sedona. You can't miss it. January 24th. Uh, a park entrance fee is required, but that's it. So it's that's technically it. a free discussion, Yes. which is really amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, if you wanted to, you could contact the park at 928-2 to 6907 or you can just go to you know Verde Valley Archaeology Center dot um, org and check that out there they're going to have all of Ken's wonderful activities listed all there mm -hmm. for you so that you can join in thank you so much for being here I appreciate it I know you're a busy man for and you're technically a volunteer right oh yes we're, all, we're unpaid we, yeah we have only two part-time paid people so yeah. the rest of us are all volunteers yeah that's wonderful and how yeah. long have you been volunteering now well, I was one of the founders of the center, so it's been five and a half years. Very nice. So, um, and we keep growing. We're up to over a thousand members now. Wow. So, um, that's, that's really amazing. Just, obviously, we hit a, we hit a little niche area that uh, has a lot of people's interest. Right. Absolutely. And there's there's so much going on here in the Verde Valley, and so much history. And and you guys are at the forefront of helping us learn more and more and more. Mm -hmm. I love the Artifacts Roadshow. That's so cool. We're going to look out for that in March. Okay. <laughs> So, Verde Valley Archaeology Center.org. Go check that out. Ken Zoll, the executive director of the Verde Valley Archaeology Center. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Anytime. Right. And we'll be right back, so don't go away. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Welcome back to the Verde Valley Experience. Our next guests are Damian and Ann Browning, who are the founders of the Steps to Recovery Homes, a really amazing organization here now in the Verde Valley. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks. Thank you. Now, tell me a little bit about the Steps to Recovery Homes. I, I know what I've seen on your website and your beautiful brochure, but I want to hear it in your words. Well, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. Um, we originally put this together to help people who didn't have the means to um, 
go to treatment or uh, something that was a little a step up from a halfway house. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah, we well, wanted to be able to offer them a lot more and. Yeah, for sure. That's that's nice to have a step up from it because as usually it's it's that or nothing. Right. Um, so that's pretty amazing. And what? So you saw that need in the area, and then what got you started, Amy? Well, we wanted to uh, we wanted to actually form something that was based around our recovery because mm -hmm. we're very passionate about changing our lives around and mm -hmm. everything that we do we do to maximize the success rate for the people. So we wanted them. You know, we started a, a daily life coaching, which is like a life skills class. Mm -hmm. We uh, give them a financial savings plan where we half their money so they can start saving up. It's a six month program, but a lot of things we were seeing was like they would get out after six months out of a halfway house and have no money saved up. Mm -hmm. So we've, uh, we half their money, we start saving with them. We offer furniture when they move out. Uh, we give them gym memberships, bus mm -hmm. passes. Uh, there's some scholarships going on. We uh, we supply their cleaning supplies, toiletries, linens. There's a lot of things, and we try to keep it really nice. And it's uh, and all the things that they're doing. You know, it's they have to do community service. Mm -hmm. and they have to get involved in a 12-step fellowship. They do a lot of things that helped us. And if they do, if they do all those things, they do really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, our success rate is about 45 percent. All right. We have about 20 people in the community with over a year clean. Nice. That have been a part of our program, and 80 uh, percent of our people we take in with no money. They're homeless. Or they're living in their, they're living on the couch or in their car or in a tent. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the kind of clientele we serve. So we had to keep it a low price. So we put together a nonprofit. Right. So with the nonprofit, we can get donations. I can write for grants. There's a lot of uh, things we can do to help uh, keep the keep the you know the homes open and help scholarship them into the homes. Right, that's true. And you're working with with folks that have addiction, substance addiction, whether it be drugs or alcohol. And so I assume you have a lot of uh, very strict protocol when it comes to your homes, what what is not allowed, and the the steps they need to follow, and the behavior that they need to be exhibiting versus otherwise. Yeah, we're more of a behavior modification program. We know that um, if they don't modify or, or change uh, the way that they see life or that they behave, that they're going to go back to using eventually anyways. Mm -hmm. So we really work on the perceptions that they have and the attitudes that they have um, and the, the things they do. You know, there's there are certain behaviors we'll see and we'll call them on that. And we'll, mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's, there's a lot of strict rules. There's a lot of things they're doing to help put their lives back together. Sure, I bet. And just having a, a safe environment to be in is certainly a huge leg up on that. Well, we try to we try to make our place safe. I mean, you know, there's a lot of rules and regulations, and we don't let anybody on the property without knowing. But mm -hmm. you know, it's not always it's not always uh, fail proof. You know, mm -hmm. but it's pretty safe and it's really clean. Mm -hmm. And we offer anybody to come look at it. It's really clean and it's really. You know, uh, and it's a family, and the people there in there all want to be there. Right. So they all want to be there, and they know that we're there for them, and they know that we've been down the same roads, and we're always, you know, uh, there if they need to talk, or there's just a lot going on. Um, yeah. That makes it that makes it different than a lot of other places. Well, sure, sure, and you guys do a really good job with consistency and keeping things, you know, very even for your. Do you call them residents? Did we what? Participants, the folks in your program? No, I'm usually just clients. Clients? Mm -hmm. Very yeah. good. Very good. Yeah, Client but most of, the, most of the people that go through our program become a lot closer than that. You know, they yeah. stay involved. They become and family, we have, I'm yeah, sure. they do. They do. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of people in the community right now that are staying involved and they help out. And, you know, uh, like just our store manager, we just opened a resale store. Yes, uh, you did. About six months ago, miracles happened. Yes, and, and that's located on uh, North Main Street. 541 North Main Street, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, it actually helps all the proceeds after we pay the bills and, and all that go right to hit, right into the homes to keep them running. Mm -hmm. uh, but great. our manager there, he, he, he went through our program and we have drivers that went through the program. We have volunteers, like there's so many people that volunteer for us mm -hmm. that have just been through the program and want to help out. So wow. it's really cool. That's amazing. How many homes are you guys operating now, Ann? We have two. two. We have a women's facility and a men's facility. Very nice. So, and both are, our women's facility is a seven bedroom, three bath home. Wow. And we can house 16, 16 women. Wow. Um, the men's facility is a five bedroom, three bath home and houses 14. 
-hmm. 14 men. Wow, that's a lot. And now how are you on capacity? Are you full? Getting there really wow. quick. <laughs> yeah. I would say our women were probably at about um, half capacity, mm -hmm. maybe a little over a half. Sure. So mm. now what is the process uh, if there is someone struggling with substance abuse issues and, and they want to change their behavior and they want to do what do they need to do? What's the first step for, for them to get to you? We have um, we have our website. Mm-hmm. Um, brand new website. Brand new yeah, website. Yeah, it's very There's nice. There's actually two websites still up, but one's just <coughs> coming in at steps 3 recovery to homes .org. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they would go on Great. there and fill out an application. Very mm -hmm. good. Okay. Um, they can call us. Mm -hmm. um, they sub yeah, uh, submit applications online. We've actually, we run them all over town a lot of times. I know we've taken a couple just recently here in town yeah. to people. Right, yeah. Yeah. Great brochure you guys have, by the way. Yeah. Doing an, an ex you guys are just doing an excellent job with yeah. everything. Your marketing, your website, your mission statement, everything is really great. And, and you can tell that it comes from a place in your heart, for sure, out of your own personal experience. And that's the best, best way to do something. Right. Absolutely. You can share you know, your success and have other people succeed as well. And yeah, they do become your family. You're gonna have such a big family. <laughs> and we will, we already do. We actually have a pretty large family. And it's really helping the community. I mean, what we do is such a big cause. Like, I mean, uh, drug addiction is such a huge issue and concern everywhere in the, in the, in the probably in the world, but in the United States and in Yavapai County, it's really bad. Mm. And what's going on is once these people go through our program, we teach them how to become productive members of their society or, or their families or their environment. I mean, um, they're not out lying and cheating and stealing. They actually, most of the people that have been through our program are holding one job. They've gotten mm -hmm. their families back, their kids back. Uh, they've gotten li driver's licenses. There's just our so much phones. thing and you know, they're not out creating all this chaos in our community mm -hmm. and it's helping the taxpayer dollars. It does a lot for our community. I mean, even, I've been to a lot of places recently and they have a hard time hiring people that can drug pass a drug test, mm -hmm. and it's like you know, so All the same. Yeah. Or it makes our neighborhoods safer, mm -hmm. our schools safer, everything. Yeah, it's a very positive thing, and uh, somebody's got to do it. And there's some other people doing it, but you know, it's 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 a lot of work. Yeah, I bet. But it's it worth is. it. Yeah, like I said, it's got to come from your heart. That's the only place. So, how long Definitely. have you guys been doing this now? Two, two and a half, half years. years. Two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Congratulations years. to you. That's yeah. really, really yeah. awesome. And We've put a lot of work into it. We have, yes. and um, <laughs> you know, we uh, we actually have a fundraiser coming up in March. That's right. Tell us quickly about your fundraiser. Go ahead. <laughs> the, the dinner for Second hope. annual dinner the, for the hope. The first dinner for hope. You know, we we wanted to do something, and it was you know we just came up. I mean, the names. You know, just like miracles happen our resale store, mm -hmm. uh, and miracles happen every day in our yeah. in our program. But dinner for hope. It's actually Dinner for Hope 2, and it's going to be March 19th. It'll be at the Moose Lodge, mm -hmm. and it's $40 a ticket. We're going to do prime rib, mm. a prime rib dinner. There's going to be Elizabeth Edwards. She's a singer-songwriter. Uh, she's pretty. She's been doing it for about 20 years. She's really good. Mm -hmm. And we have some, we're going to have a couple testimonies of people who have been through the program, and she's going to have a testimony. And then we will have about... 50 raffle items from businesses. Wow. And then we're going to have about 15 auction items, silent auction items. So last year we sold out 250 people. So I hope, hopefully we'll do that again this year and we're going to raise a lot of funds. Great. And we have a lot of businesses that are sponsoring us this year. So I really think the community uh, has been seeing that we're helping the community. They see that we're the good we're doing. Right. And it's evident on who wants to help us and who's actually stepping up to find and help us. Because Ann and I uh, started this with three credit cards. Uh, and we're just doing the well, best we can. Yeah. We don't have much yeah. funding at all. Sure. You know, so we're always looking for funding. That's another thing. We're on the charitable organization list, so you can donate and get a tax credit. Great. Um, you can. We pick up donations, uh, furniture, and stuff, so you can donate furniture, and it helps mm -hmm. go into the store, and then all Great. the proceeds go to exactly. the people. Uh, there's monthly pledges you could do, anywhere from a dollar to whatever. 
I mean, yeah. if two, one of my ideas is if 2,000 people donated a dollar a month, yeah. we can scholarship five people off the streets. I know. You know? Every month. And for the person, that's only $12 a year. Yeah. You know, that's pretty good, but that's I can't get nobody awesome. to grab onto that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow, geez. Let's, yeah. let's get everybody yeah. riled up. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, $5 a month or two. We have some people there donating $20 a month, $40 nice. a month, and it's starting to really help out. That's great. Uh, I got one person that's donating 100 a month, and, you know. Wow. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it really, you That's know, there's nice. a lot of people getting involved. And yeah, I've been doing really a lot of uh, going around to businesses and get a lot of a annual sponsors. Yeah, good. So there's a lot of people getting involved. And hopefully um, the more we, we can get people involved, the more people we can help. Right. That's our, That's you true. know, we want to do more. We would like to start a place yeah. for women and children. Mm -hmm. We would like to start uh, some other things, maybe an sure. a, a inpatient facility, but we need funding. Of uh, course, of course. Well, good. You've one of the your... big things we'll probably be doing next year is starting a building fund grant so we can buy a piece of property. Nice. So that way yeah. we won't have to be That'd renting be these properties. You guys are just steamrolling right along. That's right. Really awesome. You've got your Dinner for Hope coming up. You've got your Miracles Happen store. Congratulations on your opening there. Check that out. That's on North Main. Go to steps to recovery homes.org and also dot com. You've got two of them going yeah, on. Yeah, but right go to dot org. It's better. Mm -hmm. okay. org is much better. Dot org. <laughs> there you go. Steps to recovery homes dot org. RG. Check that out. Damien and Ann Browning, thank you so thank much you for, for what you're us. doing. Thank you for being here. Appreciate Thanks for you having guys. us. And we'll be right back, so don't go away. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? to the Verde Valley experience. We are now into the part two of our science of sound healing. I am now here with Gary Ellenberger, who is, get this, a retired physicist from Motorola. Now, that's pretty neat seeing you standing here with a didgeridoo now. It's quite a shift. <laughs> yeah, this is my low-tech uh, Your low-tech device? Yeah, this is yeah. about as low-tech as it gets, for sure. Now tell us, how did you make the transition from a physicist to a, a a lovely fellow who plays didgeridoo. Well, around 1980, a guy from Australia came through Phoenix and hitting the parties, and and I heard the didgeridoo for the first time, and I really kind of fell in love with the sound. Yeah. So anyway, I ended up buying one of his didgeridoos, but it was pra before that I was practicing on a vacuum cleaner hose. Wow. Yeah. Is that is that a normal thing? People start no, with the, no, <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> that was just your transition. Yeah, it was my know. transition. Okay, the physicist's brain. We see how this works. That's totally cool. <laughs> now, as far as sound healing goes, what makes the didgeridoo so attractive and effective? 
I think it's probably the lower frequency mm -hmm. that it has, and, and the frequency is determined by mostly by the length of the didgeridoo mm -hmm. and the width, you know, the diameter. And sure. Since the didgeridoo in Australia, they, they've been using it for at least 1,500 years, maybe a lot longer. Yeah. They, they've determined that from the pictographs or uh, paintings in Australia, you know, that, as far as the right. age, but it could go back a lot further. Absolutely. I did a little bit of research on the Aborigines, and it said that they were the first peoples to use a specific instrument in healing, in sound therapy, and that the lower frequency of the didgeridoo has been scientifically proven to help knit bones back together and help pains and relax muscles. And it's so interesting, you know, as far as frequencies go, what the lower frequencies do versus the higher frequencies. I just read that a cat's purring cat's purr, the frequency of a cat's purr actually is also similar to a didgeridoo in that it helps the bones knit back together. Fascinating! And it's just <laughs> sound. You know, that's so interesting. As far as uh, sound healing goes, uh, what got you into that from just being a person who plays a didgeridoo? Well, uh, first of all, learning to play the didgeridoo is quite a task mm -hmm. because you have to learn to breathe in while you blow out. So. And that's, that's a little of a trick. It took me like three months at, you know, to do that. Mm -hmm. And then the journey begins because then learning how to get techniques and rhythms and all that stuff, it's a lifetime journey. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Can you play a little short bit for us so we can see what happens? It's so interesting to see what happens to your face when you play. That's just so cool. And you can get all those different sounds by moving your, your tongue and your lips. How is that working that you're changing the different sounds Yeah, it's, there? A, it's actually training your neurons to do all that stuff. All so right. go, you go into automatic mode. Wow. <laughs> that that take, takes a while. <laughs> Who'd have thought playing a didgeridoo took training neurons? But you know, we are talking to a physicist, so. <laughs> well, uh, music, playing music actually does, uh, just even listening to music, the, the brain tries to figure out patterns and so on. Mm -hmm. So there is neuron growth during the listening of music. And of course, right. playing the music even more, use more. <laughs> sure, even more so. Yeah. And they say that live music or playing music yourself, you get so much more out of it. I mean, recorded music is all fine and wonderful, but when it's happening in the room and the floor is vibrating and everything around you is vibrating, that frequency is going into your body and it's gonna have a lot more healthful benefits. Have you noticed anything in your life uh, as far as your health since you've been playing music and experiencing uh, it? Well, it uh, turns out I used to have sleep apnea, mm -hmm. and it turns out that the didgeridoo is, uh, it helps with sleep apnea. Really? Yeah, it, it, it strengthens the muscles in, in, the, in the throat area and stuff mm -hmm. like that, which minimizes the possibility of sleep apnea. Wow. So are you cured? <laughs> I, I don't have it anymore, so. <laughs> wow, that's, see, there's a, yet another benefit to sound therapy. Who'd have thought cure sleep apnea? <laughs> <laughs> At least if you play the didgeridoo, which is uh, not apparently easy. Now, something that's easier to do, of course, is gongs. You can uh, hit a gong. That's a little bit easier than a didgeridoo. Anybody can play a gong or a crystal bowl, anything that creates a frequency or some sort of resonance within the body. Now, when you, what have you seen playing for other people? You notice how people's attitudes change? Um, well, it, w w when I play for other people, um, it, first of all, the, the, the power of that vibration is, I I've, I've haven't found very few, just very few people that are not affected. Mm -hmm. Most people are strongly affected by the vibration. Sure, and, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's hard not to be. And, and playing it is even more intense because the vibration is going, you know, right I'm, I'm real close to it right and and so uh, and actually you know when you when you're really playing as any musician knows if you're thinking you interfere with the playing so you, mm -hmm. you, you kind of le uh, watch yourself from a distance play right so that's kind of interesting you really kind of go in a meditative state absolutely yeah the music's got to come out of you there are so many different ways to get involved with sound healing either on a personal level or going out and finding someone who's playing out in public or getting yourself a gong or a crystal bowl or a harp or learning to play the didge which is not easy just so you know <laughs> <laughs> but there's so many health benefits and wonderful positive outcomes of any sort of music we're really di this guy discovering this now there's scientific fact 
basing that the music really can help enrich our lives and heal us and bring us to new levels and help us with clarity and meditation and and you look how how wonderful and healthy Gary is and no more sleep apnea <laughs> that's so awesome you know things that we didn't really think about before or thought maybe weren't so so now we're really getting proof that this stuff is actually working and there's so many ways for you to get involved Gary thank you so much for talking with us really appreciate it and thank you guys so much for watching but don't go away because we'll be right back your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. As an American, it's hard to hear that we have a serious hunger issue in our country. And as a parent, it's even harder to hear that one in five of our kids struggles with hunger, especially when billions of pounds of good food are wasted every year. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide billions of meals to families in need right in your community. Visit feedingamerica.org to support Feeding America and your local food bank. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America.
Thank you. Yeah, that was thank beautiful. You. Everyone, this is Three Threes. I am so happy to be here. It's such an honor to have you in the studio. Well, thank it you. really it's an honor is. To be here. Yes. Thank you. Three Threes is a healer, a teacher, a musician, an artist. Oh my gosh, and a and a musical instrument maker. That's part of the artistry, I know, but we have to separate that because that's really amazing. It, it takes serious talent to make a musical instrument. Yes, that's a whole other show. I know. It, it absolutely <laughs> is, but I want to throw a mention of that in there. Um, so tell us, as a sound healer, you have come uh, quite a way in the past 15 years, I know. Yes. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, you know, I, I started out as a kind of rock star mm -hmm. kind of guy. Um, was fairly uh, um, uh, successful at it back in Michigan, and that was kind of my thing I did for almost 17 years wow. or so. And um, I just had a kind of a awakening. We did a tour of Peru, our band did, for two and a half months and had some conscious bubbles pop there and uh, met some indigenous healers and an Afro-Peruvian band where I saw this kind of indigenous drumming and dancing and felt this energy that was like, wow. Uh, I never really felt that before mm -hmm. and wanted to know more about that. Healing was always cath cathartically healing for me, just kind of getting it out, releasing, you know, uh, in, in music, but I never really understood the deeper uh, aspects of how music can be healing um, uh, in, in a deeper way mm -hmm. and to use frequency uh, for, as a healing modality. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's quite a ways from rock star to, to here. Though yes. you're still a rock star of a sort. It's, it's just a, a different kind of rock star. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about some of the things that you use uh, in sound healing. Well, this is just a, this is just a couple of things. You mm -hmm. know, uh, normally the drum is a big part of what I am because of my roots in traditional uh, indigenous healing techniques or shamanic kind of techniques from different uh, cultures. Um, Africa was one of my main teachers, uh, uh, Baba Lawa, what they call him, or his medicine man of his tribe. Uh, so that goes deep into the rhythmic patterns of drums. Uh, but the drum is used as a tool, healing tool, for indigenous healers all around the world. Sure. Um, so the drum is a big part and the foundation of what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, but also I use crystal bowls, uh, Tibetan bowls. Uh, this is called a halo drum. It's kind of a newer instrument, very mm -hmm. ethereal, and we'll hear a little later. Um, chimes, flute, didgeridoo is another big uh, part of the healing tools. Right. Uh, yeah, a lot of different, a lot of different tools, a lot of different frequencies. I know. Yeah. And you have kind of developed your your own way of doing a sound healing, and you call it a soulmonic. Yes, yeah, soulmonic sound healing. So I'm the creator of soulmonic sound healing, and I I uh, started to brand it that way because it really is a, a different approach than a lot of the sound healing that's out there. So there's a lot of sound healing modalities. Um, more common is the crystal bowls uh, or gongs. Um, and so, and vocal toning, but things are getting more progressive now. People are really getting into sound healing and understanding um, frequencies, not only in quantum physics, you know, everything's frequency, they're all saying, but people are understanding that things are working at deeper levels now. So they're going into specific frequencies with tuning forks, uh, different scales, specific hertz and things. Uh, but I am, I incorporate a little bit of that, but since what my foundation is kind of in these shamanic techniques, um, but we also started going to forgetting about the techniques and going into this kind of higher self connection or that divine connection in that oneness place. Uh, so this kind of spiritual aspect um, to and to guide us through these journeys. Nice. So it was really going to the soul level of harmonics. Mm -hmm. um, so I got tired of using it as a shamanic sound healing. Uh, so it came to me shamanic and then soul harmonics, and I was like. Solmonic. Really? Yes. So, um, so it's a uh, it's a different kind of process. It's a right. it's a it's a lot of drumming yes. and a lot of tribal kind of aspect and indigenous techniques. Right. Yeah. And I I noticed that when you do perform, it's it's a very full sound. You know, a lot of sound healing is more monotone or one particular mm -hmm. thing or a few things. Mm -hmm. But you, this man is a one man band. Right. I mean, you are amazing. All the different tones you can get oh. going at the same time and, and what you Thanks. do with a looper, you've got to check out um, one of Three Trees' uh, sound healings. If you uh, check them out on the website, that's threetreesedona.com. You can also check them out on Facebook. You're very active on Facebook. I am it's Three very Trees, nice. public page or Three Trees Sedona, a personal mm -hmm. page for me or like mm -hmm. me. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Keep in yeah, touch so with what's going uh, on. Yeah, the, the looping pedal kind of came came in uh, as I started to do larger and larger groups. So I do private sessions and, uh, and things and um, 
And I do, of course, regular kind of more performance events mm -hmm. of world music and things. Sure. Um, not as much anymore. Now it's mostly focused on sound healing. But uh, the looper gives me the, uh, the advantage of not having space when I switch instruments mm -hmm. and also to layer it to make it full yeah. in layers of right. drum patterns. And, and so as we go, the thing about the drum also with sound healing is uh, different rhythmic patterns have elemental aspects of mm -hmm. uh, earth and fire and wind, uh, air and, and water, masculine, feminine, different archetypal things. Uh, so just like yoga poses mm -hmm. kind of go into some of those energetics. Sure. So um, the thing about the drum also is our body is like a mass of rhythmic patterns that are happening. Not only the physical ones, the endocrine system, circulatory system, digestive system, all this stuff, but the more uh, ethereal or energetic systems of the chakra system, the biorhythms, they call them, the energy meridians. And so it's like a symphony happening. Mm -hmm. And we, they get out of sync from the stresses of life, uh, from being pulled in so many directions, and uh, um, traumas that we haven't healed and things that cause blockages. And if you think of uh, tennis shoes in a dryer, I use the analogy, it doesn't feel good when you're in the room when the tennis shoes are in the dryer. It's very irritating mm -hmm. to the system and you want to get out of there. Mm -hmm. And having our systems internally out of sync can have a little bit of that feeling. And so we can have feelings of anxiety, uh, low energy, uh, um, even depression and things of this nature can come from the fact that our systems are out of sync right. and not in alignment. And so things don't feel right. Right. And so a drum is kind of like the conductor coming into the symphony, tuning up and the chaos and mm. tap, 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 and everything comes together. So a big drum being pulsing through the body and the, all the systems feel that rhythmic pattern happening. And so it gives them something to align with, and wow. to play along to, and helps reset those wow. rhythmic patterns. That's amazing. Boy, you, you could teach a course. Yes. On the, now I'd like to go to this course because I'm sure there's there's so much information. We can't possibly squeeze it all no, in. No, <laughs> but I am having one next month, as a oh, matter of fact. Well, there we go. Uh, that's a good segue. I have a sound healing retreat where we're mm -hmm. going to start to go into this, a three-day retreat at my home in Sedona, uh, February 19th, 20th, and 21st. Mm -hmm. And you can find out more about that uh, on the website. Right, yeah. threetreesedona.com. And you're going to perform some more for us. Mm -hmm. that's, and the first song you said was called Gratitude. Which is very yes. Nice. Well, the, well, that that one is is what I just did there is through also the way I present is getting into a zone mm -hmm. where allowing that divine presence within us to come very forth nice. or allow that guidance right. of that. So uh, the tones of the voice are kind of uh, yeah. guided through that space. I kind of try to step out of the way. Yeah, sure. My, the ego and the human mind just get it out of the way and let that source nice. come through. Yeah. Nice. Well, thank you for, for sharing with us today. Yeah, really thank appreciate you. you being here. And thank, thank you. you all very much for watching today. We'll see you next time on the mm -hmm. Verde Valley Experience. I will leave you with three trees. Thank you.